Well, howdy. Welcome to the Bender Bunker, your online resource for B-Bender country guitar since 2017. And it's cover tune time here in the bunker, something we don't do very often, kind of on an annual, biannual basis, whenever the cover tune mood strikes me. And I mean, heck, I must have heard this Haggard classic 100 plus times in my life. But for whatever reason, when it came on the home hi-fi system this time, something snapped in my mind. And I thought, boom, I need to learn that intro. So I did. And now I'm here to show it to you. Uh, the intro of the classic tune, The Bottle Let Me Down. And we're going to be using our Bender guitar to great effect as we try and mimic the pedal steel playing that opens that tune. And then we'll segue right into the great Roy Nichols Telecaster parts as the intro does on the song itself. And then after that, after you saw that intro where I held up the Merle Haggard Bottle Let Me Down album cover, and that's straight off the Bunker's Country Wall of Fame just off screen there, and the world spun around, I came back with what I like to call my time machine licks. Uh, that's a little game I play to keep myself inspired here at the bunker where I pretend I have a time machine and I get to take my Bender guitar back with me and sit in with Merle Haggard and the Strangers and they let me play a solo with the Bender over the verse part of that song. And so I came up with what I thought I'd want to play over that. And I got to be honest with you, I think those the bonus licks here on this lesson might be among the most twangy country licks we've offered in quite some time here on the channel and I'm excited to walk you through them. So those will be the time machine bonus licks. And I'm not sure what's crazier that uh, if I went back in time that Merle Haggard would even let me sit in with the great Roy Nichols standing next to me or that I would have a time machine. We'll just call that both crazy. And so before we go any further, I do want to remind you, you've got your mouse. You've got the chapter headings at the bottom of the screen. So use them to navigate accordingly. You can skip the talking, anything you want to do. Right now we're in the intro talk tab. Makes sense. Next tab over is the bottled intro licks. That's the intro to the song. And then the third tab will be the time machine bonus licks where you can grab what you need off of those at Buffet of Bender Twang and grab the pieces you like make them your own. As always, that's the point of this channel. And so... The song starts with the pedal steel player. He gets the whole party started. So we're going to be getting into some bender parts real quick right out of the get-go. Sounds like this. So hopefully we'll get you 95, 99% there and you can have all kinds of fun with that Merle Haggard intro there. The bottle let me down. Now I'm not going to walk through the uh, Time Machine bonus licks. Uh, that's the third tab. Grab what you need there. But I will say this before we get going. Uh, I'll share a little anecdote with you. As I was working on these licks of the Merle Haggard song, now this has got to be in my top 10 of all time favorite classic country drinking songs. I mean, it's just right up there with the best of them. I found it darn near impossible to get through working on these licks without being incredibly thirsty and parched for a cold beer myself. It's just literally impossible to work on these licks without a cold beer. And as such, and who sees this segue coming? You saw the segue? Good for you. As such, it's a great time for me to remind you that if you are of a mind to support the channel, one of the best ways to do so is send over what we call a virtual beer donation, amount of your choice, safely and securely through the Bender Bunkers PayPal account. We've got a direct link for that in the details section below. That's where you use PayPal to send over a virtual donation amount, and I turn that into real ice cold beer, and that keeps the Bender Twang Machine humming here for future lessons at the bunker. Now, if you want to support the channel, but do so in a more quick, free, and easy manner, then uh, we got you covered. Just give us a quick thumbs up if you're enjoying the content, looking forward to the lesson, and let that YouTube algorithm know you'd like to see more Bender guitar, more country guitar in your feed, and maybe less politics. Let's see if that works. Okay. And then if this is your first time with us, you enjoyed that intro, well, good news, that's what we do. Hot Bender action for nearly six years with almost 80, well, I think over 80 now, Bender-related videos waiting for you on our main channel page in one playlist. You can get lost for hours, and we'd love to have you as a subscriber. So consider hitting that subscription button in the bottom corner of your screen. And so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, that's about it. I say go grab the bender, go grab the bottle of your choice, and let's get started now with the intro licks to The Bottle Let Me Down here at the Bender Bunker. Let's get rolling with the intro to The Bottle Let Me Down. Nice to have you on board. We're going to start this whole thing out, as I mentioned in the intro, we get into some pedal steel parts, mimicking pedal steel parts. We're going to get the bender involved rather quickly. And we do that with this opening eight note pattern I'm about to play for you and then show you. And keep in mind on the eight notes, eight notes I'm about to show you, it's the seventh note that we get the bender initially involved by taking it up and leaving it there for note seven of the eight. Sounds like this. 
that was note seven going into note eight. Eight notes all together, note seven's when we get the bender involved. Let's learn them real quick. Now it's important to note, I'm trying to cop a pedal steel feel as best I can, okay? And it's not just about the bender at this point, it's about how I attack the picking style. So I've tucked the pick in my hand right now and I'm using my thumb and my index finger because a pedal steel player is picking multiple strings at once. And so single pick doesn't work well for me when I'm trying to do that. I need to hit two strings at once and that's one of the ways I try and get as close as I can to the pedal steel parts. It's just something to keep in mind when you watch what I'm doing here. So let's go over those seven notes. The first four will be this. And that's on the third string, nine and 11, and then we'll be going B string 10 and 12. So I've got my index finger on the third string, nine. I'm using my thumb. And then I'm going up to the third string, 11th of my thumb. Then I'm doing the B string 10th for a quick note with my index finger. And then coming right back to the B string 9th, my index finger, picking that with my thumb. So here's your first four notes. Now we're going to go and let our little finger do what it's kind of already doing, cover the top two on the 12th. And we're going to let our little finger fall on the B string 12th for a quick note. That's note 5. And then we go right back down on the B string to uh, 10 with our index finger for note 6. So put the two together. And then go right back with your little finger, still covering the top two on the 12th. Now we're at note seven. This is where we take the bender up when we hit note seven and we hold the bender engage. And then we hit note eight, which is the high E 12th next to it. Again, that's my little finger covering the top two on the 12th. So here we go all together, that opening eight note sequence. Just get that nice and smooth. Listen to the studio track to get the rhythm. It's got a kind of a bounce to it. So I've got the top two on the 12th ringing in there, bender fully engaged. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna substitute the little finger for the index finger on the top two on the 12th, allows the little finger to go up here to the high E 15th for a note, right? That's what we need. Bender still engaged, keep that in mind. One note, high E 15th, and then let it off and do high E 12th already covered by your index. And now we're gonna go ahead and hit the B string 12th to let the bender to Bender comes down, and then you can use your middle or ring finger to do the third string 14th for that note. So we just went high E 15th, high E 12th, B string 12th, let Bender down, and then third string 14th. Let's put those all together. Okay, now the Bender's unengaged. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, remember our index finger was already covering the top two on the 12th. Let's kind of do that again, but let's just only use the B string 12th. And then we'll have our little finger go back to where it was, high E 15th. So now we've got B string 12th, high E 15th. Right, those two, we're gonna pick those two together. Again, I'm using my thumb and my index finger. I'm gonna pick them together and bounce them with the bender three times. One, two, three. So it's one, two, three. And then I let the bender down after that third one. So that's our opening sequence. Now we're gonna do this. And that is our third and second string together using our bender. So what I'm doing there to mimic that pedal steel again as best I can, I'm using my ring finger to position on the third string 12th and my index finger on the B string next to it on the 10th. So we've got 12 and 10 fret wise on your three and two strings. But what I'm doing is I'm sliding with that ring finger on the third string into the 12th position. That naturally allows my index to fall next to it on the B string 10th. So as I slide, the minute I get there, I'm immediately hitting the B string 10th and taking the bender up, but I'm picking them together. doing this sequence we only do the slide into the, B, the G string 12th once once we get there we just work that position but we're going to do five bends up and down two three four and then the fifth is a little bit different as we come off it that's coming off the fifth so all together and that is so I'm hitting that 
B string 10th twice before I let that bender down. So all together. And the bender's unengaged. All right, let's work on the Roy Nichols part by getting the pick back ready to go. Here we go. Okay, so we just came off the... Bender's unengaged. What I'm going to do is take my ring finger, move it over to the B string 12th, and allow my index finger to fall on the high E 9th. So B string 12th, high E 9th. I'm, I'm going to do kind of a, once I have the ring finger on the uh, B string 12th, I'm not going to press all the way because I need a dead note with a triplet. Right? I'm just picking the B string in isolation. Again, I've got my pick back in action. One, two, three, and then the fourth. And I take the bender up on the fourth, and then I immediately go to that high E ninth with my index finger. So it's, and the bender comes right back down. Do it again. And that's that's the only time. I mean, Roy's not using the bender, but I figured since this is the bender bunker, let's do a little bit of bendering on the Roy Nichols part, right? And the bender's unengaged. Now the next parts I'm going to show you don't involve the bender there. So that is going to be your B string eight, B string six, and your G string, your third string seventh. But again, what I'm doing is once I get in position there for the uh, to start there on the B string eight, I've got my hand down ready to go, but it's not pushing down, so I so I can down pick and then doing that kind of picking motion. And then what I'm doing is when I, the first note I'm gonna hit at this sequence is going to be that B string eighth, but I've got it pre-bent kind of a half, not even a full step. Again, I'm alternating then once I do that, that is going to be B string eighth back down to B string six with my index finger. I'm using my ring finger and index finger. And then a next note will be your G string seventh with your middle finger. with the pick now we're going four string fifth a little bit of a pre-bend there then we're going four string third and I also give it a little bit of a, a bend out of that that four string third and then we go down to your fifth string fifth and then if you had your bottom string your low E tuned to D like Roy Nichols does on the studio you would go five three open but I'm tuned up so now I'm going to go down to the bottom string uh, third first and I'll just hit an open D string so I can't go any lower because I'm not detuned There you go. That is as close as I'm going to get you on this lesson to the uh, great intro to the classic, The Bottle Let Me Down. Now, if you want to stay tuned and go on to the next tab, I'm going to be taking you through the bonus Time Machine licks, and we can have some fun there as well. All right, let's get going. Looks like you might want to learn some of the Time Machine bonus licks. That's great news. Nice to have you on board for these. Let's get started with this sequence. <laughs> That's going to start this party. And again, I, much like I did in the opening sequence, I'm going to be using my thumb and index finger to really get twangy with it, be able to hit two strings at once, and then do a lot of percussive up picking with the, that's just how I like to do it these days. Don't worry too much about the pick hand right now. Let's concentrate on what the fret hand and the bender section is doing. And then I'll circle back after this and take you up close for a pick hand cam like we've been featuring on the last few lessons. So you can really get a closer look at what my right hand's doing, okay? So let's learn this sequence. It is the fourth and second string together. Four string fourth, 
uh, second string third, really kind of the, if I was playing a C chord and just moved it up because we are in D, moved it up two for D. I'm just using the top portion of that, the four and two strings. So that's my middle finger on the four string fourth and my index finger on the B string third, one under it. And so what I'm doing is I'm, with my thumb, I'm picking just one fret down on the four string, sliding right into the four string fourth, immediately going up to the B string third with my index finger and picking that, and then coming back and lifting my finger off the four string for a dead note. So it's really three things, two live notes and a dead note, right? There you go. So we go. Now we're going to take our index finger from the B string third up to the B string fifth. I'm going to pick that, take the bender up. And then the little finger's already where it kind of needs to be, high E eighth. Go back to the B string. I'm just going to alternate now with the bender and gaze. We're going to alternate between these two. string again on the fifth let the bender unengage and re-engage it and now we're back engaged so here's what we have bender's engaged we're going to use the top two strings and these same fingers we're just going to reposition real quick so now i'm changing to index finger on the b string eighth and the high e tenth with my little finger and i'm going to do hit him twice and let the bender down Double stop them twice and on the second one let the bend around. And after I come off of that double stop with the bender coming down on the second one. So double stop up here on the eight and ten, right? Bender comes down unengaged. I do a quick dead note for timing. And then I do a pre-engage. So it's coming down as I hit that, that dead note, I'm pre-engaging. Index finger's going down to the top two on the fifth because we're gonna work out of the D bender box now. And I'm gonna start with the high E, go straight to the B string fifth and let the bender down. high E fifth again and the last thing I do now is hit the B string bender's unengaged hit the B string with my index on the fifth take the bender up hold it for a second and then I'm going to go ahead and pick it again and unengage and re-engage it's all together as I get down to this part, I'm letting them all ring together. All right, work on that, get it nice and smooth, and we're going to take it further. All right, let's utilize what we've already learned to get this next passage started. We're going to do, start it the exact same way. We're going to use most of the position we've already learned just in a slightly different way with our bender, and we're ultimately working our way up to the top of the neck of a open D7 chord, just a high octave up here. It sounds like this. The second pass we're going to learn. All right, let's knock that out. We're going to start it exactly the way we just learned. Two notes and then a percussive third dead note. Again, you're four, two, right? Just like you learned before. And then we're going to go to the second position. You've already learned that one. That's index finger on the B string fifth and then your little finger on the high E eighth, right? Percussive note. Index finger going to B string fifth, little finger high E eighth. I'm going to go ahead and pick the B string on the fifth, take the bender up, and then immediately hit the high E eighth. Benders. And then slide into that position. You know that position. We used that one before. That's B string eighth, high E tenth. Index finger still staying on the B string. I'm just... As the bender comes down, I'm going to go ahead and pick that B string again and allow, as I pick it, I'm going to slide the index finger from the fifth to the eighth, and by the time I get there, I'll fully engage the bender again. Sounds like that. And then I 
hit the high E 10th with whatever finger you want. That looks like my ring for that note after it. And then we're going to do the same thing. Top two strings. We're going to keep the index finger working the B string for us. We're just going to pick and slide from where we are in the eighth up to the first two strings at the high octave D seventh open chord. That's your B string 13. And then i um, got my ring finger next to it on the high E 14 to make the top two notes of that high D seventh chord. So we're just going. And the bender's still engaged. That's important. So here we go. And the bender's engaged. Now what I'm doing now is I'm going to take my pick hand, slightly mute the strings so that you don't hear what happens next. I'm going from this high octave D seventh open chord down to the actual D seventh open chord back down an octave lower. Bender's still engaged. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and walk that D seventh chord down starting on the high E. When I get to the B string part of it, the second note, the bender's coming down and then I'm completing it with that third string second. I'm really just walk, picking down an open D seventh chord down here with the bender engaged and bender coming down. That's all you just heard. D seventh chord with the bender being let down on the second note. I just hit that last note of the D seventh chord and I'm going to go ahead and take my index finger off the B string and then hit the open B string to take the bender back up. So really what I've got ringing there is your third string second and A note and then I just took the B string to an A by letting the open B string get bent back up. quick note on the high E third with a little finger come right back to the third string second still being noted there by my middle finger then I take my little finger off and do an open high E and then I can hit the open B string to let the bender down four note sequence three and on the fourth note the open B string lets the bender down. All right, practice that, get it nice and smooth. Really, it's about using your index finger to slide into those positions. that smooth and we'll take it from there. All right, this next part sounds a little hectic and it might be, but I'm gonna walk you through it and we're gonna get it nice and smooth. So we're coming out of this four note sequence where we let the open B string back down and unengage the bender, right? We just did the and the bender's unengaged. One, two, three, four. Now we're gonna hop up here to a position we've already used, third string 12th and B string 10th. And it sounds like this. Together sympath and sympathetically, and that's what we want. So again, that's that's the transition we're going to be doing that you saw in the intro. Here's the nuts and bolts of it. So as you come out of that four-string pattern, bender's unengaged. I'm using my ring finger to slide up here to the target of the third string twelfth. That's all you hear during that down here to up here transition is that third string twelfth. I'm going up to it now. When I get to that target of the G note on that third string 12th, I'm gonna be pre-engaged on the bender at that point because that's all I'm hearing is that third string audio wise. When I get there, I pre-engage, then I drop my index finger down there on the B string 10th so I can pick them, double stop them together again, thumb and index finger, and then let the bender down on that second double stop. So coming out of the four notes. Can you hear it? But when you've already got these ringing, it kind of masks the fact that you've just got these two in isolation. So when you do it right, they continue to ring and it sounds nice. Like that. OK, 
Okay, so now the bender's unengaged. Now we're gonna work this position for a little bit, that 12-10 on the third and second string. That's a four note sequence with the bender going up on the fourth note. So what I'm doing is third string 12 for a note, right into the B string 10th for a note. Moving that up too, so now it's 14 12 for another third string, second string note, but then on that B string 12th, that's when I take the bender up on that fourth note. One, two, four, right there. Bender's engaged, let's keep it that way. Like we've done before, little finger goes for one quick note on that high E15. So we've got, they're all ringing together, that works. Bender's engaged. Let's drop back down on the third and second string. We never change fingers. Let's go back down to where we were, 12 and 10. Double stop them twice. Take it down the second one like we've already done. Bender's unengaged. Now we need to do this. So we just came off of. Little finger's gonna go right back to where it was, high E 15th. When it gets there, we're gonna pre-engage and let our index finger fall below it and cover the top two on the 12th below it. When we get that position going in the bender engage, we're gonna do one note on the high E 15th. Come right there to the B note with the still bender engage on the 12th. Little finger comes up so I can go high E 12th. And then go back to the B string and let the bender down. Bender's unengaged, right? And then I hop down here and I go back to that same position at 1210 with my ring finger and my index finger. That's the move. So to do that, you do that little sequence. You're coming down and then now we're gonna get back here and assume, that, assume the position we already have. My ring finger is going right back down there to the third string 12th. I, I hit a quick note. Pre-engage the bender, and then allow, again, like I did before, index finger falls on the B string 10th, double stop, I'm coming down on the second one. So all together. So here's what we know so far, coming out of the four notes down here. is we're going to be working out of this seventh bender shape for A and we're going to be using the third and second string for that so we're going to be using the middle finger on the third string ninth and the B string one down on the, with the index finger on the eighth and same as before I'm unengaged and I am going to slide in on that third string with my middle or ring finger whatever is more comfortable for you to that target of the ninth fret on the third string and then pre-engage the bender by the time I get there so I can drop the index finger one behind it on the eighth, double stop them together and let them down on the second one the way we've been doing to keep the same style. So that's what we're doing right there. And again, that's just the second third string of the seventh shape for A. And then we're, I think what I did in the intro there is now the bender's engaged, I had a little bit of time at the backing track, so I just did a. So I went from here, just pre-engaged, let my next finger fall on the top two on the fifth, and went high E to B, let the bender down. Unengaged. So here's what we got. Now we're gonna do this. Just came off of this, just real quick two notes. Top two with the index on the fifth. So now we're gonna do, we're gonna work that seventh shape again where we just were. And that's gonna be a one, two with a dead note on the third. So a three, a triplet, but the, you know, that like we've been doing, that third note's dead. So we slide back up to where we were. And again, I'm using my middle finger and index finger sliding up to the third string ninth, immediately hitting the note on the eighth next to it, my index. Coming right back, lifting up my finger, doing a dead note on the. And then I'm positioned and now to use the top two strings for this. So. Index finger right where I left it, B string eighth. And then 
I use, you can use your middle or ring for the ninth on a high E. Let the bender down and then slide into the top two on the 12th. Again, just the top two strings on the 12th. I'm using my middle and ring finger, so. Bender's engaged. What I'm gonna do now is keep my, in this case, ring finger on the high E 12th, and I'm gonna let my index finger go where it usually is, B string 10th, and then let up the other finger. So now I've got 12, 10 on the top two, and I can double stop them like I've been doing and let it down on the second one. And then we end strong with this. Go back to where we were previously, index finger top two on the fifth. We're going to be working the D bender box. Pre-engage, we're just going to go high E straight into the B that's already bent, let it down. Right into the third string seventh with our ring finger in this case to complete that D bender box. And then go right back to the B string and take the bender back up. Let them ring together. So here we go. Now we're going to name check that mama tried like we did in the intro we're in a great position to do it we've got the bender engaged we've got our index finger covering the b string on the fifth we're just going to let it wander over and also cover the g string on the fifth next to it right and then i'm going to hit the b string let the bender down and go to that g string fifth next to it <laughs> That's how you work the whole bonus lick section out. Again, the key point here is there's got to be one or two things that really caught your ear when we were going through those licks. Concentrate on those. Don't get caught up in the whole thing. And grab those little sections and bring them in and make them your own. Again, that's the whole point of this channel from the beginning. And I hope there's something there you can uh, work with. I threw a lot at you there and, uh, and hopefully something stuck. All right, I'm going to get on out of here. You now got the intro to the Merle Haggard Classic. The bottle let me down, so I had to switch to cans. And then you've got the bonus lick so you can do with as you will. I've enjoyed showing this to you. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I'll see you again with some more hot bender action. Remember, it's never too late to go on a bender. I certainly hope you do. And I'll see you again real soon. Until then, keep it bent. Thank mm -hmm. you.